Hey guys, thanks for joining. I'm Raphael, a happily married father of two with a full-time job who tries to squeeze in epic ultra running adventures in his life, probably like many of you. My channel shares these experiences through films aimed at inspiring others to go ultra whilst discovering incredible locations. Today, I'm taking you on one of the most beautiful, but also one of the most dangerous trails in the world, the Kalalau Trail on the island of Kauai. I'm going to share this epic adventure with you and give you my perspective on some of the dangers of this trail, as well as share with you some advice on logistics to get there, hydration, nutrition, equipment, and much more. This trail didn't go as planned, so so stay tuned until the end to see for yourself the many trials and tribulations I suffered and which make this trail legendary. Kauai, nicknamed the Garden Island for its lush tropical rainforest, which covers much of it. Kauai is located in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, nearly 20 hours flight away from Switzerland, on the other side of the planet for me. And it's the fourth largest island of the Hawaiian archipelago. Why is this island part of my video series, you'll ask me? Well, it's been a dream destination for me for many years, and it's part of my adventurous trail running that I seek, as it boasts one of the most dangerous but beautiful trails in the world, the famous Kalalau Trail that follows the Nepali coast dramatic cliffs. I managed to squeeze this adventure within the agenda of an incredible family holiday that we've been planning for the past nine years. The legendary Kalalau Beach, which is inaccessible by car, can only be reached on foot along this perilous trail or by swimming from a moored boat off the coast and defying the strong currents. The trail usually takes hikers several days to do, but I'm going to attempt to do it in one day on a fully self-sustained run in the crushing heat and humidity. It's the first time that I'll be undertaking such a long and grueling run outside of Europe. I'm now about to take on this epic adventure. But wait a minute. This adventure didn't actually start here. Let's rewind to several months back. The challenge actually started exactly three months ago in front of my computer in Switzerland. Right, so with the uh, 18th of April and uh, I'm three months out from uh, the uh, Kalalau Trail, you have to really book in advance. So I'm waiting anxiously for the next three minutes to be able to, to book the, uh, the permit for the, for the trail. I'm actually really stressed. So here we go. The authorities only deliver 60 permits per day, and without this golden ticket, you cannot proceed beyond the mile two marker. At midnight and one second, all the permits were gone in a flash. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, man. A total disaster. But luckily for me, I managed to secure a permit the following day by pure luck, which meant that I could now plan for this epic adventure to one of the most dangerous but beautiful trails in the world. So fast forward back to Kauai, as we are now ready to take on this epic adventure. So we're on the island of Kauai, and today we're going to do the epic Kalalau Trail. So there's about uh, a liter of uh, water I'll be bringing with me, with the filters. I have some tablets to sanitize the water that I'll be picking up from the rivers along the way. I brought my poles, just in case there'll be some elevation gain, and for the balance it's going to be pretty slippery probably, so that I'll... I'll need for sure. Bring the Garmin. There's no, um, there's no signal, so this will definitely help you in case you have emergency, especially as I'm going to be running it alone. Bandages, cover, wet weather gear, enough food as well to last me about six hours. A light, just in case I get stuck for whatever reason overnight. Have a light source as well. First aid kit and my pack. The uh, objective is to do it within six hours. So we've arrived at the uh, Kalalau Trail uh, head. Uh, actually, I think I could have uh, I could have arrived a little earlier, but um, hey, people arrive I think at six or six thirty. So in case you're coming along, uh, try to get here earlier. As I set off on this trail, a few tips on the logistical aspects of the trail. As you saw, getting a permit is pretty complicated. You need to be connected three months out of the date you're booking for at exactly midnight Kauai time. My advice is to have three devices connected to the website and have an official online clock open so that you can click on order at exactly midnight and hope that one of the devices gets you to the confirmation page. That's how I managed to get my permit. Once you have the permit, you can then reserve parking, 
which is on a different site. You can only reserve the overnight parking if you already have a permit number as the site will ask this from you. I suggest you get that parking as soon as you get the permit. But let's get back to the trail before I return to some more logistical advice. The Kalalao Trail is a 22 miles out and back course that follows Kauai's North Shore. To reach the beach, I'll need to confront the infamous Crawler's Ledge, a delicate passage with a steep ledge and exposed to high winds. My first stop is Hanakapai Beach at around mile two. Pretty impressive. As we continue along this first part of the trail, back to some advice. Once you have the parking, you may ask yourself how to manage your non-trail related belongings once you are on the trail. Is it safe to leave belongings in the car such as suitcases? General advice I've seen is that it's better not to leave anything visible or even hidden in the car as the parking is not monitored during the night. There have been several reports of theft. So one option, if your hotel or Airbnb does not allow you to leave your stuff with them, is to use a special luggage drop-off. For those without a car, people have used independent transport operators to get to the trail and back. Taxis, Ubers or lifts are difficult to get on the North Shore. So what I've heard is that it's much better to use reliable local independent drivers that have been used by many hikers. There's also the official Haina State Park bus transfer that you can book. It departs at specific times from five different points on the North Shore, the furthest point being Waipa, which has a large parking and is six miles away from the trailhead. Alternatively, you can try car sharing by finding someone else to doing the trail on the Facebook page Kalalao Trail. Get to the trailhead as early as possible. Google states that it opens at seven. In actual fact, you can get there any time earlier. The parking is open, just leave your permit on the dash for the rangers to check that you're eligible for parking. So we're about uh, three kilometers in, climbed about uh, 170 meters, feeling good. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful scenery, absolutely breathtaking jungles, view of the sea. Starting to understand why they call it the most beautiful trail in the world. They also call it the most dangerous most deadly so we're gonna find out why I guess a little later as we get along the coast there's this place called crawler's ledge which is a cliff vertical cliff uh, pretty exposed so have to be careful over there and don't forget to like this video if you're finding it useful and subscribe if you want to continue following my trail running adventures So it's now time to get some water. So I'll have my filter. I'm gonna add some tablets in there. There we go. One of these little guys in here. It takes around half an hour to dissolve. It's uh, 7.28. So uh, my filter plus this little tablet inside should do the trick to get rid of any nasties in, uh, in this water. It's uh, highly recommended to to have these uh, tools with you because this water is uh, definitely not uh, not clean uh, not clean water so I wait until half past eight to drink from this one and in the meantime I'll drink from my other one. Water is a vital part of the adventure. There's several streams along this course from which you can filter your water. Here are the ones I identified. However, some of the streams closer to the trailhead were very dry, so keep that in mind. This is one of uh, the dangerous parts of this, uh, of this trail, is uh, crossing these rivers. So these rivers are prone to flash flooding, and you definitely don't want to cross them uh, when it's uh, flash flooding. Uh, you will be carried away, no problem. So, for the moment, uh, this river is, uh, is pretty, uh, pretty calm. No thunderstorms planned for the moment, so we can safely cross it. Thunderstorms are frequent in this tropical climate. Always check the weather forecast before heading to the trail, or you might find yourself trapped between two raging rivers. That was pretty fun. So we're now at uh, Hanakapiai. Beautiful beach. Wow continue this way we have a bit of a time constraint as well got the family waiting for me today so 
got to go back to the... I guess it's this way. Let's see. No clue which way it is. I think it's up there. So we got the family waiting for us today. So... I guess it's this way. I don't think it's this way, is it? No. Got a bit lost there for a second, but uh, we're on the right path now. So yeah, ah, this is the place. So I brought my, my permit with me. Have it in a waterproof uh, uh, plastic bag. So in case they ask me, I have it with me at all times. And it won't get uh, sweated out. So, so I was saying I gotta be pretty quick on this trail because family's waiting on me to go back down to the south shore we had to check out of the hotel they have to check out of the hotel earlier than we would have hoped so I can't let them uh, sit around too long so it's another objective of mine to try and complete this as fast as is reasonably possible safely obviously and trying to capture the moment because this place is absolutely breathtaking that's pretty awesome even have some goats here. Hey guys! Wow, amazing. It's a good climb there, we've done. Nearly around kilometer five. 350 meters ascent. Beautiful. Non, non, non. <rire> Là, on court pas. Ouh. You don't want to run here, man. That's the path there. If you slide, if you slide down pretty much the whole mountain. So uh, I think I'm going to take it easy here because uh, I don't want to find myself uh, in a complicated situation, to say the least. Difficult to assess the verticality of this on video, I guess, but uh, believe you me, it's uh, like that. That's how steep it is. So they also talk about uh, falling rocks. I guess this is what they're talking about. That's pretty, uh, pretty impressive uh, cliff right above me. At this point in the trail, we're completely off the grid without any mobile signal at all. I agreed with my wife that I would regularly keep her updated on my progress and so had pre-registered standard messages in my Garmin InReach 2 to easily send her these updates, basically telling her I'm still alive. But even the Garmin had some challenges sending the messages. Eventually, the message is sent. Wow. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Well worth the trip. I now reach the stream that is meant to be at mile 4.2, but it's completely dry. So we're about six kilometers in, six and a half kilometers in. Uh, about 500 meters elevation gain. Uh, I'm gonna have my first uh, first uh, eating. Give myself uh, some energy. I'm not hungry at all, but uh, you gotta keep those uh, calories up and eat, drink well before you need it. 
these are my favorites i've been using them used them on a couple of races including the marathon du mont blanc in chamonix uh, a few weeks ago really good oh wow there's a helicopter it's one of the helicopters we took the other day so yeah nutrition uh, super important i've learned it's uh, along the way mistakes especially you need to eat loads 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 every hour every 45 minutes eat something even if you're not hungry because at some point your stomach's gonna is gonna block it's gonna tighten and you won't be able to put anything down your throat so eat well in advance has some rain on its way a few showers probably wind kawaii so what do you expect especially on this side of the island it's gonna make things a little interesting beautiful rainbow <laughs> amazing wow. wow 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 Beautiful rainbow, but a beautiful drop down to the sea as well. So, yeah, these parts are not very wide at all. So that's pretty, uh, pretty dangerous. <sighs> Breathtaking. No words to describe this. Absolutely epic, to say the least. Amazing. Whoa. Wow, wow, wow. You go ahead. You go ahead. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's a bit uh, narrow here and pretty vertical, so be careful. <laughs> Have a great day. Hey fellows, this path sort of looks easy to do, but the problem is it's uh, it's inclined, so it's it's a little bit on an angle on the uh, on the mountain, so keep sliding down the down the hill. So got to be careful on these paths; more tricky than they uh, they seem. What are you So I've been looking for water for a while. It's already kilometer eight and I haven't really come across any streams. I found this one, but it's very small, but I got to fill up my bottles. So here we go. Here's for round, uh, round two. When I prepared this uh, this trail, people have said that there's a lot of water points, but to be honest, I haven't seen uh, that many over the eight first kilometers. I don't know if it's a dry uh, dry season or something, but uh, the rivers uh, look like this at the moment. Stagnant water. So I prefer obviously taking water from uh, moving uh, moving water rather than stagnant water. So I'm not going to be filling up my bottles with that uh, pond. But yeah, so if you're doing this trail, be mindful that uh, if it's uh, a drier season, you might have more difficulties uh, finding water. Here's another stream. Not very good. Ah, 
That water is amazing. Incredibly blue. Wow. With the, with the sun, it just the blueness comes out even more. Pretty impressive. I think on this shot, we can appreciate the uh, steepness of uh, the mountain with the uh, with the trail here so that's how steep it can get so beware if you want to slide off the, that part of the mountain about two hours in so now it's time for more calories here you go we're now in a section which is much more runnable so i'm taking the advantage to, to gain some time Morning. Hello. Hello. So that was another uh, river. Good river to fill up around 10th kilometer and you get some smart people who uh, take off the arrow for the direction of Kalalau that's very nice for them a bit confusing I had to ask which way to go apparently it's that way I'm slowly getting closer to crawlers ledge the infamous section of this trail anxiety is starting to mount will I be brave enough to overcome my fear of heights So we're at uh, kilometer 10.5 approximately with 700 meters ascent, two hours 21 minutes in. <clears throat> there are a lot of stops for pictures and, uh, and filming, so yeah, I guess we're a little bit uh, behind schedule, so I'll try and accelerate a little bit the pace. But I uh, guess there'll be some tricky sections ahead, so I'm gonna do a risk based approach. All right, I guess this uh, is uh, the start of the more dangerous area, so I'm gonna be careful now. It's pretty tough. Uh, <laughs> complete loose stones, gravel. Yeah. Yes, there's uh, some uh, mudslides when it rains a lot, but yeah, this is the way we're going. Down there, then across to over there.
right, so this is Crawler's Ledge. This is pretty, uh, pretty insane. It is, as they say, very steep. I mean, uh, I don't like heights, and to be honest, I'm not at all uh, confident, especially on this type of uh, terrain. It's super, super slippery. So, you know, loose, loose stones and uh, loose pebble is. Uh, uh, you can slip at any point. So. This is pretty tough. Luckily, there's not too much wind, but wow, it's pretty impressive. Crawler's Ledge is indeed a challenge for several reasons. First, if you don't like heights like me, it's going to be difficult. Second, the terrain is very slippery, so you'll need good shoes, and it's not only applicable in this section, but several parts of the trail as well. I have quality trail running shoes on, but I'm still sliding everywhere. I'm using the Hocker Speed Goat 4 with the Vibram technology, which is super high grip. Poles are also vital in my view here. The lighter you are, the better. Third, the wind is strong, and I can imagine that when it strengthens even more, it could further increase the anxiety of falling. Some people ask me whether they can bring children on this trail. I wouldn't bring mine. To get to Kalalau, there's no alternative. You must overcome Crawler's Ledge. Wow, that was pretty intense. It's a very, very narrow ledge to get across. Now, I understand why they call it Crawler's Ledge. I was uh, pretty much uh, ducking down uh, the whole way. I'm not a big fan of heights, so that's my bit of adrenaline. And uh, nice to know that I got to do it in the others, in the other way, on the way back. The trail is narrow most of the way, and therefore the issue arises when you cross paths with hikers coming in the other direction. The crossing can be pretty perilous. Go ahead. Have a great day. Kilometer 12, another stream. I think that's Kalalao Beach over there. We're arriving. Nearly uh, 2 hours 47 minutes in. Uh, there's another one. River stream that's around 12, 12 kilometer. So at least there's a little bit more streams here, it's true. At the beginning it was a bit more uh, sparse. At this point, I'm having a great time, but the time constraint I have is an issue. I'm having to rush through some beautiful sections and also missing out on some of the other trails that can take you into the valley. For sure, one day is too short, but that was my only option. If you get a chance, definitely stay longer to take your time on this beautiful hike. But don't take it lightly, these 11 miles are grueling and you need to be in a good physical state. The elevation changes make this a much more strenuous than a flat 11 miles walk. All right. Cool. There's loads of streams uh, near the end of the, the trail, which is good. So on the way in, seems like you'll be fine in terms of water. I'll be on the way back, I think, uh, which is more the problem near the end of the trail on the return. <sighs> Starting to feel the effort now. Kilometer 13 and a half. It's actually already 900 meters elevation. So it's more than I thought. Let's get this done.
We're now getting closer to Kalalau Beach and the number of helicopters is drastically increasing. I think that's Kalalau Beach down there. And with this vegetation being so thick, you have the choice of either being cut on the left side or falling down the mountain. So obviously uh, I've taken the option of being cut on the, the left side. Uh. I don't know. There we go. Guess we uh, we made it. We nearly there. At this point in the trail, there are many streams which is perfect as it's starting to get very hot and I'm going through my bottles very fast. I'm already over three hours into the journey and I'm starting to worry that I won't make the six hour target I set myself. We're arriving, kilometer 16, so here we are. But I'm keeping my wife updated with the Garmin as I go along. I'm just surprised that I'm not receiving any replies. I send the messages as text messages and emails just in case, but something seems off. Oh yeah, we're arriving at Kalalau Beach. Not easy. So it took me a little more, a little longer. Hopefully on the way back I'll be quicker. As I step into this magical setting, I realize that I'm in a special place. And what I've done is more than just a hike. It has been a pilgrimage. And in some way, I feel that I have not honored this sacred place by attempting to do it in one day. Unfortunately, the alternative was not to do it at all. Despite the limited time here, I do my best to be present and soak in the special energy in which this incredible landscape is wrapped in. It's an escape from reality. A sacred shrine where time stops. A sanctuary of peace and reflection, far from the modern world's superficialities. A harbor of peace full of history and legends. We're in the Hanupu Valley, also called the Valley of the Lost Tribe, after its inhabitants mysteriously disappeared. Legend has it that warriors were chosen from birth to carry the deceased tribe chiefs to the burial sites in the cliffs and then were to die themselves so as to keep the burial site secret. It's believed that once a chief died, his bones held a supernatural power and if found by others, they could be used against the chief's tribe, hence the supernatural energy felt in this part of the island. Unfortunately for me, I can't stay much longer. My time constraint requires me to head back. I'm already late. Unbeknown to me, my trials and tribulations are just about to start, as if the island decided to make me pay the price of not taking the required time to fully appreciate the honor bestowed upon me to tread this sacred path. Definitely spend more time if you have the chance, and please ensure you keep this sanctuary clean when your pilgrimage ends. Down is this way. That was a pretty epic uh, Kalalau beach. <sighs> very, uh, very nice and very inspiring. Now uh, heading back, so I won't be doing as many stops this time. Uh, 
on the way back I really got to go pedal to metal to get back as fast as possible to catch up with the family who's waiting for me. As I start my journey back towards the trailhead, I still haven't received any messages from my wife and I'm now starting to worry quite a bit. Did she receive any of my messages? I'm late on my schedule and she's going to start to worry if she hasn't heard back from me yet. All right, this turn time is grueling. Ah, the sun is killing and the wind pushing me. Ah. Bye bye, Kalalao. Pretty narrow, eh? Have a good one. Thanks, you too. Alright, so this is why you always have to keep your emergency stuff with you. I just suffered a fall. So, uh, yeah, just bandaged it all up. Oh, it's just a cut. So, not very nice at all. Uh, I've never used my medical uh, bag before, but today it's come in really useful with all the tapes and stuff I've had to be able to bandage up my knee. The slight camber on the trail got me this time. As I was running, my right foot slipped on some loose gravel. Had it been another part of the trail, this might have finished differently. So the message is clear to take it very cautiously. I decide to stop to clean the cut. Unfortunately, I didn't take any antiseptic cream with me. So definitely add this to your checklist before you head out. So I've redone my bandage, cleaned my uh, my cut, so I should be okay now. Oh, it's falling to pieces again. Hopefully it'll stick more or less. completely lost, unable to find the path and even having troubles finding where I came from. Ah. Everything looks the same in this jungle. In desperation, I pull out my phone to check Google Maps, but obviously I have zero signal. Alright, so a bit of a uh, bit of confusion as to which way the trail goes. The trail is not really well marked. Alright, I'm uh, silly trail actually uh, instead of crossing the river to just go down here so it just shows you can get lost pretty easily as well here if you're not uh, on the ball. I made the mistake of not loading the GPX on my watch to safely navigate thinking that the trail was an obvious trail along the coast. It's not as I will find out again further along the trail. Come this way, it's easier. The one you sliding down that mountain. <sighs> Tough. The Tough. Crawler's legs, that one kind of gave me the goosebumps. This trail is not your typical hike. It's not just a 22 mile round trip. The elevation gain and the terrain make it a whole different ballgame. In Europe, we usually add one kilometer for every 100 meters of elevation gain. So this total out and back trail of 36 kilometers and 2000 meters elevation gain would be equivalent to a flat 56 kilometer or 35 miles. The clock is inexorably ticking. I've sent several messages to my wife, but no answer. I don't think she's received my messages, and I'm now worried because I know I will make the six hour cutoff, and she'll wonder what happened to me. Yeah, I'm gonna refill my two bottles here because after it gets a little bit sparse, the streams with kilometer 25, so. Getting there slowly. We've now reached the Hanakoa campsite. It's past midday 
and it's now very hot and humid. I'm going through my water extremely fast. I doubt I'll have enough to last me until the end, especially given the drier streams closer to the trailhead. So I have to sacrifice speed for lower sweat, but also higher safety. My time is nearly up. I failed to make the six hour cut and I'm still 10 kilometers or six miles from the trailhead. I'm now up against a wall as each passing minute from now on will increasingly worry my wife. Some sections are really not easy. Oh, Attends, mais c'est par là? Well, I guess we got lost again. This is not the not the path. Jesus. I guess we're back on track, but so confusing sometimes. Can't see the track. See, it's at these intersections. Come down the trail, come to the river. And it's not totally obvious where the path goes. I guess it's over there. But I did that mistake already and got lost, so let's hope it's the right way. All right, this time it was the right way. Hot as hell now. Good thing the canopy is giving us a bit of a shade. And now, where the f is the path? I guess it's this way. Sorry. Some of these sections are completely confusing. You never know if you're on the right path. Or you don't want to get lost in the woods here. I say the jungle. Despite not being sure whether my wife is receiving the messages, I try yet again to keep her updated. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Strangely, on the way back, the path is much less obvious than on the way in. It seems to just disappear when you cross the streams. Secondary paths appear and end into nothing, probably the result of numerous other hikers making the same mistake and paving new erroneous paths. The danger is going too far along, being disorientated and not finding your way back to the main path. Where is the trail now? The gentle rustle of the leaves dancing around as the wind brushes through them giving the moment a peaceful feeling is in total contrast with the rising panic rushing through me. I'm lost yet again. That feeling of being totally helpless in the middle of the jungle is a scary one. Uh, yeah. the trail Jesus Christ There we go it's another example 
I can stray off. You're just following the path. Continue straight. This looks like the continuation of the path. And you miss the bifurcation, which is here. Really, really annoying. You really got to be on the ball. This is getting tough now. Kilometer 29. We've climbed 1,900 meters. And I'm lacking water. And this is a section which has less stream, so I'm just about to finish my second bottle. It's hot. Hot, hot, hot. As I progressively get closer to the Hanakapai beach and the trailhead, I take stock of this incredible adventure. I definitely underestimated it. This trail deserves the utmost respect. I would have needed much more time to do it. The experience also confirmed what I learned only too late in terms of dangers. For me, one of the bigger ones is that of straying off the path and becoming disorientated in the jungle. It's really much easier than one thinks. If you get lost in there, you could spend a long time finding your way back, if ever. Oh. Crawler's Ledge is a challenge for those with a fear of heights, but several sections just before are probably more dangerous in terms of terrain, giving the soft soil you need to tread before reaching the solid rock of Crawler's Ledge. Don't ever consider doing that section when it rains. Getting there. Another danger is also not testing your communication gear before heading out. I'd successfully tested the Garmin inReach in Switzerland, but not in the US. My wife never received the messages I sent her, but not because of the device. We made the mistake of keeping her phone in flight mode when we landed in the US to avoid the roaming charges and then forgot to adjust the phone settings to receive text messages. But because all the hotels had Wi-Fi, we never noticed that we hadn't adjusted the settings. And because Garmin inReach sends text messages, well, my wife never received them. Because I was so late on my schedule and because I hadn't contacted her, she reached out to the park's authorities who reassured her because they knew I was here given that I had a valid permit. Hence, the importance of having a valid permit for your own safety, especially if you're going on your own like me. But despite these trials and tribulations, it was an awe-inspiring experience that I will need to repeat with more time to fully appreciate the magic of this sanctuary. It remains very preserved, and we should continue to nurture it. If you ever get a chance to tread this ground, respect it, and it will in turn offer you something unique your unique Kalalaur experience. We made it. 34K with uh, 2,100 meters elevation. Uh, with a long stop at the beach. A fall, had to look after my legs, so I lost quite a bit of time. So it took me uh, seven hours, 47 minutes extremely difficult to run any of the sections uh, on the second part very very difficult I can hardly walk on them so it's very very slow uh, rhythm not easy to say the least oh. best bath ever. <laughs> 